Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so in this lesson we're finally going to get around to uh, adding and subtracting fractions, which is something that I wanted us to uh, start on last lesson, but uh, we spent so much time talking about um, mixed numbers and converting them into improper fractions that uh, we couldn't get around to this in the level of detail that I wanted us to, to get to, so I thought we'll just leave it all for uh, one video, and we're going to try and get through all of this uh, in one lesson now. I'm going to do my best to keep this from getting uh, extremely long. Um, but basically, we're going to break this up into two parts. The first part is going to be adding and subtracting uh, proper fractions. I hope you guys can see the red marker all right. If you can't, please let me know and then I'll switch back to, uh, to black. Um, or perhaps to another color if I I think I still have yeah, I still have an extra black pen. So uh, if if you can't see the red, please let me know and try to bear with me for this one. But uh, if I don't hear any complaints from you guys, then I will stick with red for the time being. Um, so we're going to break this up into two sections. Like I was saying, the first section is going to be adding and subtracting proper fractions, and then the second is going to be adding and subtracting uh, mixed numbers. Now, with the exception of oh, that's a terrible B. Um, with the exception of subtracting mixed numbers, once you get the hang of um, adding, you, subtracting is, is not overly different. And even when you're subtracting mixed numbers, the process is basically the same, um, except for one sort of special case. But you'll see that as we get there. So we'll, I'll introduce the concept with addition, because I think people just tend to be more comfortable with addition. Uh, and then we'll do a couple of subtraction examples as well for each of them, and you'll see how they're similar, and then in one special case you'll see how they are different. So, let's start with this uh, section one, this adding and subtracting proper fractions. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try and add two proper fractions together. So let's say we want to add uh, two-thirds and five-sixths together. All right, so this is what we have. These are our two proper fractions that we want to add together. Now, what you need when you're adding and subtracting fractions is what we call, you, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but just so that you have it written down somewhere, you need a common denominator. This is something that you have hopefully seen before, but if not, basically what that means is you want both of these fractions to have the same denominator uh, so that you can add them after that. That would be like, um, you know, if you buy uh, two pizzas and you have some amount of one pizza and you have some amount of the other pizza, different toppings or whatever. Um, if you then try to describe how much pizza you ate to a friend of yours, you're not going to go up to them and say, oh, well, I had, you know, two thirds of this one and five-sixths of that one, you might tell them the total number of slices, which in this case you would look at just the numerators, I guess. You could say, you know, your pizza was cut into thirds and you ate two of those three slices and then you ate five out of those six. So you could tell them, oh yeah, I ate seven slices, but the slices were different sizes. Or if you take that pizza that's cut into thirds uh, and possibly also the pizza that's cut into sixth and you cut them up so that each pizza has the same number of slices, then you could give them one single fraction as an amount of how much pizza you ate. Now, obviously, that's not the best example because we don't go around telling people, I ate one and three quarters of a pizza or whatever, um, right? And especially with bigger numbers, when you're working with denominators that are like sixes or sevens or tens, you're not going to be like, oh, yes, I ate, you know, two and four sevenths of a pizza. Nobody talks like that, right? So obviously, that, that isn't the most... Uh, practical application uh, of this, but this is something that's useful to know, so just kind of bear with me while we go through this. I promise um, we'll get to um, some of the more complicated stuff later on. You guys know how I am uh, with these math classes. Um, so, common denominator. Basically, we want this fraction to have the same denominator as that fraction. Now, sometimes that involves changing just one of them, sometimes it involves just changing the other, sometimes it involves changing both denominators. And so basically, we to change the denominators, we multiply the fractions that we're dealing with by something. Now, we have to figure out what that something is. 
And basically, in order to get the same denominator, the easiest way to do it, some people look at this and they think, okay, well, if I want the same denominator, I can multiply 3 by 6, and I'll get uh, 18 down here, and I can multiply 6 by 3, and I'll get 18 down there. That would work, but uh, in some cases, and maybe if we have a little bit of time towards the end, I'll show you an example of why that's not the best practice, is you might, you would get a common denominator, but you might be working with numbers that are much, much larger than the numbers that you need to be working with. You know what I'm saying? So like, you could end up doing a question where you get a denominator of 81, but your denominator could have been like 27 or like 18 or 9 or something like that, right? You might look at the numbers and think, oh, I could just multiply those together. That'll give me a common denominator. Yes, but sometimes there's an easier way to go about it. And so the easier way to find a common denominator is to find the LCM, the lowest common multiple, of your denominators, of the denominators that you're dealing with. So in this case, we're dealing with 3 and 6. So we want the lowest common multiple of 3 and 6. Now, because we're dealing with small numbers, you might be able to see that that lowest common multiple is just going to be the number 6. But if not, we can go through and just quickly we put a 3 here and a 6 there, and we'll go and find that lowest common multiple. And so we look at both of these. Uh, I'm just going to speed through it because we've already done lowest common multiple, so I'm hoping you guys can do that now. Um, so we'll get a 2 here, we get 3 and 3, and then we get a 3 here, and we get 1 and 1. My lowest common multiple is 2 times 3, which is 6. So we can always check that, um, that what we're doing is right by actually going through the lowest common multiple calculation. Obviously, with these smaller numbers, Sometimes you don't need to do all of that, but it's always good practice to show your work as well. The only reason I'm trying to sort of avoid it is because I've got limited space and there are things that I need to kind of kind of keep on doing, right? Um, but uh, so basically, we want to get both of these denominators to be whatever that LCM is. And in this case, the lowest common multiple is 6. So basically, I want that first fraction to be something over 6. And then I want that second fraction to be something over 6. Now in this particular question, that, that second fraction is easier to deal with. We already have a 6 on the bottom, so we don't have to change anything. We can just take that 5 that's on top and just rewrite that. And we've got 5 sixths. Our second fraction is already dealt with. Now our first fraction, we started with 2 thirds, right? And we want to turn it into something over 6. So to do that, you're going to take that 2 thirds and you know, it's alright, okay, it's two-thirds, it has to be equal to something over six. What is that something? So the way you can figure that out is you look at this denominator that you started with. You started with a three on the bottom, and you, you ask yourself, what did I multiply three by to get to six? And you'll get that three times two gives us six, right? Now with fractions, in order to have two equivalent fractions, if you're multiplying one of the denominators by something, you also have to multiply uh, its numerator by the same thing. So if we're multiplying 3 by 2 on the bottom, we also have to multiply 2 by 2 on the top, and we get 2 times 2 equals 4. So that's going to give us our fraction um, with a denominator of 6. So we take this 2 thirds, we've done our calculation over there, that 2 thirds is equivalent to 4 sixths. We wanted that 6 as our target denominator, and so we've got 4 sixths over here. Now, when you're adding fractions or subtracting fractions, once you've got the common denominator, just go ahead and add the numerators. Ignore the denominator. Um, not like ignore, like leave it out of your answer, but ignore in the sense of, I'm going to sort of just move this down a little bit. Um, ignore in the sense of, you don't have to worry about it while you're doing the addition, and your final answer will just have whatever denominator that you have uh, in your second to last step. That penultimate step with the common denominators before you actually do the addition, you'll just keep the same denominator in your answer. So from this point, we can go on and just add the numerators. We've got 4 and 5 as our numerators, so we add those together and we get 9 sixths. Uh, which, depending on the teacher that you're dealing with, or the tests, you know, instructions, or, you know, the situation that you're in, you might be dealing with fractions in a, in a future job or something like that, uh, depending on the situation, 9 sixths might be a good enough answer, but in math it's always good practice to 
uh, reduce your answer to lowest terms. So we can reduce both of these because both of them are divisible by 3. So let's go ahead and divide both of those by 3. And we're going to get that 9 divided by 3 leaves us with 3 on top. And 6 divided by 3 leaves us with 2 on the bottom. We can take this one step further and uh, convert this improper fraction into a mixed number. And that would give us our final, final answer, which is going to, in this case, be 1 and a half, right? If you have three halves of something, you can make one complete whole, and then you'll still have one half left over. So then we get that our final answer, depending on the question that you're dealing with, is either 9 sixths, or if we want to be more proper and reduce, we get three halves. But if we want to be even more proper and express it as a mixed number, we get one and one half. That's our proper final answer for this particular question. So we get that two-thirds plus five-sixths equals one and a half. All right, so hopefully that's making sense. Um, I'm going to do another example. I'll go through it a little bit more quickly. Um, one thing I want to point out is, so in this question that we just did, when we went ahead and found the lowest common multiple, that lowest common multiple was 6. So sometimes your lowest common multiple will be one of the denominators that's been given to you. Now in the next example that we do, I'm going to show you that while you could get a common denominator by just multiplying the two denominators together, there is a lower option, which is the option that you get by finding the LCM. Um, so that's the example we'll do next. And I'll do the problem itself a little bit faster, but I will explain uh, what I'm doing as I go through with it. We'll make this another addition one, and then I'll do subtraction after that. So we're going to do 3 eighths plus 1 sixth this time. All right, so in this problem, if we want to get, remember, your first step is to get that common denominator, right? So your first step is going to be that common denominator. Step two is you're going to add, or if, depending on the problem, you might subtract. And then three, reduce if possible. Those are sort of the, the key things that you need to remember when you're going through uh, an addition or subtraction problem involving fractions. So you're going to get that common denominator, then you're going to do the addition or the subtraction, and then you're going to reduce your answer um, to the lowest possible terms. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and do that for this particular question. So we've got 3 eighths plus 1 sixth. Our first step is to get that common denominator. Now, if we wanted to get our common denominator by just multiplying these two denominators together, we'd get that 8 times 6 is equal to 48. So you'd end up with a denominator of 48 plus some other thing with a denominator of 48. And those would be your two fractions. But if we go through and find the LCM of 8 and 6, you'll see that it comes out to a smaller number. And maybe you've already calculated it, in which case you can write that down. But we've got 8 and we've got 6. We can factor out a 2, and that's going to leave us with 4 and 3. We can factor out another 2, that's going to leave us with 2 and 3. And we can factor out another 2, 1 and 3. And we can factor out a 3, 1 and 1. And so that means our LCM here is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 which is going to be 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. Huh. So our denominator that we were getting earlier was 48, if you just multiply those together. And that is a common denominator, but if you're doing these problems without calculators, then uh, you'd be working with unnecessarily large numbers in your head. You might be able to still do that all, all that multiplication, and you might, uh, you know, have memorized your times tables and all of that perfectly, but um, but you, we might as well make life easy for ourselves. Finding the LCM of two numbers, especially two really small numbers like this, isn't that much work. Um, so finding the LCM doesn't really take that much effort, and then you'd be dealing with smaller numbers in your problem anyway. All right, so hopefully that explains the, the reasoning why I'm doing it with the LCM instead of just throwing those two denominators together.
All right, so I'm going to get rid of my calculation of the LCM just because I need some space. Um, and so we want to turn 3 over 8 and 1 over 6 into two fractions that have denominators of 24, because that's the LCM of those two numbers. So we want to get that common denominator. So I'm going to get rid of that step one there. Um, those rules, if you've written them down, common denominator, add, subtract, reduce, those rules apply for uh, both addition and subtraction, which hopefully was clear from this second step. But just in case you know, you, you've written them under your addition thing, make a note to yourself that this pattern also applies in general to subtraction. All right, so um, let's turn that 3 over 8 into something over 24. Well, that's a horrible 4. Something over 24. So we want to figure out 8 times what number is going to give us 24. We get that 8 times 3 is going to give us 24. So whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. So I'm going to take that 3 upstairs and I'm going to multiply it by 3. And that's going to give me 9 over 24. So I've got a 9 over here. That's the first fraction dealt with. Now, same idea. We want to do the same thing, but uh, we're going to do it with the um, with the one sixth. Maybe I'll just erase this one, and we'll do it in the same spot. So we want to figure out. We know we're going to have a denominator of twenty-four, so I'll leave that there. We've got one sixth. And we want to turn that into something over 24. Now, 6 times 4 will give us 24. So we know what we're multiplying by. So then we take that 1 upstairs and we multiply it by 4. And that's going to leave us with 4 over 24 as our answer for that note. So now we take this 9 over 24 plus 4 over 24, right? We've just converted 3 eighths has become 9 24ths. And 1 sixth has become 4 24ths. And now we can just add those numerators together and keep the denominator uh, the same as what it was. And so we get 9 plus 4 is going to give us 13. And then our denominator is just going to come along for the right. It's going to still be 24. And that, in this question, is our final answer. We can't reduce that anymore. It's not an improper fraction, so we don't have to convert it to anything. That's it. That's all there is to this problem, is just doing that addition. And then you're done. So in this case, you could say reduce. Maybe you can, if you can make a note to yourself, you can say reduce if possible. Because it's not always going to be something that you can do once you've done the addition or subtraction. All right, so reduce if possible. And in this case, it's not possible. So we're done. Um, I'll do another example now. But this time, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to do two more examples. And they're both going to be subtraction, and then we'll move on to mixed numbers. I'm going to do these ones kind of quickly. I'll do the first one maybe a little bit more slowly just because it's subtraction, but you'll see as I write them down that the process is really not that different at all. Um, so for this one, we're going to take 3 fourths, and we're going to subtract from it 2 fifths. All right, now just a note, if you happen to find that the number, the, the second number, the one that you're subtracting from the first one, happens to be larger, then you can get a negative answer. Now, if you're working on a word problem and I'm asking you for like, how many meters of fence I need to buy to close a, to close a rectangular field kind of thing. Now, obviously in those kinds of questions, getting a negative answer doesn't make any sense, right? So, um, so that's something to be careful of, but in the examples that we're doing here, we're not going to have to worry about negative numbers. So, all we have to worry about is the subtraction, and the first thing we need is our common denominator. So let's find that LCM. You might also see this if you look in textbooks as LCD, D for denominator, because that's kind of where we tend to use it a lot. So let's find that LCM or LCD of 4 and 5, because those are our denominators. So if I just go through that process, I can factor out a 2, and that's gonna, that 5 is going to stay. I can factor out another 2, and then 5 is a prime number, so I'll put a 5 there, and we get 1 and 1, and we get that our LCM is 2 times 2, which is 4, 
times 5, which is 20. So in this case, the LCM did happen to just be these two numbers multiplied together. And sometimes that is the only uh, common denominator that you'll get, or like the, sometimes that is the smallest common denominator that you will get. But if you do it through this process, you'll make sure that you're always, always, always getting that smallest one. So hopefully that sort of, uh, I've shown you all the different cases now. One where one of the denominators you don't have to change, one where you have to change both denominators but not just multiply them together, and then now this one where you do just straight up multiply the two denominators together to get your new common denominator. So we know our lowest common multiple over there is 20, so we're going to have our two fractions with denominators of 20. Now to get from a denominator of 4 to a denominator of 20, let's get rid of that over there. And I can get rid of this LCM equals 20 as well, because we already know our denominator should be 20. So we started with 3 fourths, and we're getting something over 20. That's our target. Now, 4 times 5 is going to give us 20. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. I'm going to multiply 3 by 5 as well. That's going to give me 15. So that's going to be this first one over here becomes 15 over 20. Then that second one, similar idea, 2 fifths becomes something over 20. What do we have to multiply the bottom by? Well, 5 times 4 will give us 20. So I have to do the same thing on top. We get 2 times 4 is going to give us 8. So I put an 8 for there. And so now I've transformed our original fractions from 3 fourths has become 15 twentieths, and then 2 fifths has become 8 twentieths. So far, exactly the same process as addition. The only difference is that in this particular question, we're subtracting. So, instead of adding the numerators together, I'm just going to subtract them. Don't subtract the denominators. You'll get an answer of zero on the bottom, and that's not pretty. So, uh, never fiddle with the denominators for addition and subtraction once you have that common denominator, except for reducing. You're never going to add or subtract the denominators together. You only ever multiply them by things or divide them by things. All right, so when we look at our numerators, we know our denominator is just going to come along for the right, so I'm going to stick that 20 down there. And then doing this subtraction up top, we get 15 minus 8 is equal to 7. And so that, because we can't reduce 7 twentieths anymore, that right there is our answer. Alright, so hopefully now you can see that subtraction of proper fractions is the same idea as, um, as uh, addition of proper fractions. We don't do anything differently except that instead of adding the numerators, we subtract them instead. Um, one more quick example before we jump onto the mixed number bit is 4 sevenths minus a half. And I'm going to speed through this one a little bit just so that we can at least get through addition of mixed numbers and then hopefully subtraction of mixed numbers as well. So finding that lowest common multiple, this is another example of just having to multiply them together. If you go through the calculation, you'll get that your common denominator should be, for this one, 14. So we want to turn our two fractions into fractions that have denominators of 14. So we want to turn 4 sevenths into something over 14, and we want to turn 1 half into something over 14. Now for 4 sevenths, we multiply this 7 by 2, so we're going to do the same thing to the top, 4 times 2, that'll give us 8 over there, so we get 8 fourteenths up here. And then 2 times 7 will give us 14 on the bottom, so 1 times 7, we multiply them by the same thing, 1 times 7 will give us 7 fourteenths on top. So, we've got now, we've turned 4 sevenths into 8 fourteenths, and we've turned 1 half into 7 fourteenths. We just go ahead and do that subtraction. We know the denominator is just going to come along for the right, and 8 minus 7 equals 1. And there is a very speedy, um, but complete, second example for subtracting proper fractions. Alright, so hopefully you're getting the hang of this. It's not too much uh, work to add and subtract proper fractions from one another. Um, adding and subtracting mixed numbers, though, 
can be a little bit more work. And so, because they're a bit more work, I have two different methods to show you, and sort of three different methods, because there's sort of like a little extra step that you have to worry about for one of these methods. So, uh, let's consider the following mixed numbers. Let's say we have one and two thirds, and two and three quarters, and we want to add these together. So we've got one and two thirds plus two and three quarters. All right. Now that's the problem that we're dealing with. I'm actually going to take that. I'm going to erase that and write it way smaller. So we've got one and two thirds plus two and three quarters. Is that what I said? Yes. One and two thirds, two and three quarters. Cool. So we've got two options here. Your first option is convert both your mixed numbers to improper fractions. That's your first option. And your second option um, is instead of converting them to improper fractions, plural, um, your second option is to add the whole numbers separately and add the fractions separately. So add the whole numbers and fractions separately. So I'll show you both, and with addition, it's a lot easier um, than with subtraction. With subtraction, you'll see the thing that you kind of have to worry about. Um, so let's do that first method. Um, we'll convert both of these to improper fractions. Now I'm just going to use the shortcut and to turn this into an improper fraction I'm going to go clockwise starting from this denominator. First I multiply then I add. All right. Hopefully you're remembering this from uh, not too long ago when we were talking about converting mixed numbers to improper fractions. So this first one to get the numerator it's going to be 3 times 1 which is 3 plus 2 which is 5. So that's going to be my numerator and the denominator that I had in my mixed number just comes along for the ride, and that's going to become a 3. Now that's going to stay a 3, rather, I should say. Now for the second one, I've, I've got to go around the same idea. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, over 4. Alright, now once you've converted both of them to improper fractions, now we want to get a common denominator. And once again, I'm going to save you a little bit of time here because the central focus is not finding the common denominator right now. But the common denominator in this case is 12. So we want to get something over 12 for the first fraction and something over 12 for the second fraction. Now if we want to turn 5 thirds into something over 12, it's going to be 5 thirds equals something over 12. Well, 3 times 4 is going to give us 12, right? 3, oh boy, 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. So I'm going to do the same thing to the top, 5 times 4, and that's going to give us 20. So I'm going to have a 20 over here as my numerator. Now if I do the same thing for the second fraction, I'm going to have something new on top. Um, so we've got 11 over 4. And we want to turn that into something over 12. Now to get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. So I'm going to do the same thing to that 11, multiply that by 3, and we're going to get 11 times 3 is 33. And so I'm going to get and that 33 goes up on top over here. Now we can go ahead and do that addition uh, of those two fractions. And we can just take those numerators, add them together, and we'll get an answer of, if I erase those things so that I have some space, 20 plus 33 is going to give us 53 over 12. And then I will leave this for something for, uh, uh, as something for you guys to check, but if you want to convert that into a mixed number, you should get 4 and 5 twelfths. And just to make sure that I've done that right, 12 times 4 is 48, plus 5 is 53 over 12. So that should be the mixed number that you get if you try and work that one out. Okay, so that's one way to do it. One way is this whole mixed number 
to improper fraction business. It's not a bad way, and I think that's the way that I learned it when I was younger and the way that I sort of would have naturally thought to do it. But one way that works perhaps a little bit easier, uh, again, it's an argument of you have to deal with smaller numbers using this second method. And for addition, it works great. For subtraction, there's a slight drawback to it. So the second method is to add the whole numbers separately and then add the fractions separately. So basically what I'm saying is I take this one and two thirds and I'm going to break that into one plus two thirds plus two plus three fourths. So I've taken each mixed number and I've broken it into whole numbers on one side and, and uh, fraction on the other. So I've got whole number, fraction, whole number, fraction. And now I'm going to take these two whole numbers. I've got a one here. I've got a two there. I can add those together. 1 plus 2 is going to give me 3. Right? So basically what I'm doing is, behind the scenes, I'm taking those mixed numbers, I'm, uh, I'm taking those whole numbers, grouping them together, and then I'm going to take those fractions and group them together. So that's my next step, is I've got the 3, and then I need to do... So I've got 1 plus 2 is 3, that's where those... Oh, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then we've got plus 2 thirds, plus three-fourths. Now, we want to get a common denominator between this three and this four. So once again, we're going to get our lowest common multiple, same denominators as before, is still 12. Um, and then we want to rewrite both of these fractions with a denominator of 12. Alright, so uh, I'm going to get rid of this thing over here, just so that we have a little bit more space. So, um, and I'm also going to get rid of that whole 12 business. So we've got, we know our lowest common multiple is 12. So we want to turn 2 thirds into something over 12. And we want to turn 3 fourths into something over 12. So 3 times 4 is going to give us 12 on the bottom. So I need to do 2 times 4 on top, which will give me 8. And then for the second fraction, 4 times 3 will give me 12 on the bottom. So I have to do 3 times 3 on top, which will give me 9. So these are my new fractions that I'm working with, 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths. So now if I go and I take this, and I add those together, I'm going to still have that 3 from before. Then I'm going to have plus uh, 8 twelfths. And then I'm going to have plus 9 twelfths. And I can add those two fractions together because they've got common denominators. Um, and they've got a well, yeah, so they've got a denominator of twelve. So I can go ahead and add those together, and I'm going to get that. If I erase this mess down here, that becomes eight plus nine is seventeen, and the denominator comes along for the right. So I've got three and seventeen twelfths. But seventeen over twelve is an improper fraction, so I can convert that into a mixed number. So it's still going to be 3 plus something. Now, if you convert 17 twelfths into a mixed number, again, this will be something that you guys can double check, but for now, I'll save you time because we've already covered how to how to go through that uh, conversion. That should give you 1 and 5 twelfths. Alright, so that's 1 and 5 twelfths uh, for just this fractional bit, but then we still have this 3 over here from before. So basically, we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to add the whole numbers together and the fractions together. We've got a 3 with no fraction attached to it. We've got a 1, and we've got 5 twelfths, right? Now, 3 plus 1, that's 4. So we've added our whole numbers from this line here. We've added our whole numbers together. 3 and 1 is going to give us 4. And then we have an extra 5 twelfths to tack onto it. And if you wanted to put a plus sign, you could, but I'm just turning it right back into a mixed number by ignoring that plus sign. So I've got 4 as my whole number, and then I've got 5 twelfths as my fraction. And there's the same final answer, I believe, that we got in uh, the first method, the converting them both to improper fractions. But this way, we didn't have to deal with huge numbers. We did have a 17 come up, but that was the biggest number we got, whereas last time, 33. I think was the biggest number we got, and we ended up dealing with 
53 and then converting it back to you know it's just sometimes you'll end up with smaller numbers when you're working with this method um, for subtracting fractions I've been going through this addition of fractions a little bit more quickly than I ordinarily would and that was because I wanted to save time for subtracting fractions but because of the little sort of extra thing that you have to watch out for I don't want to rush that so I'm gonna leave subtracting fractions for the start of the next video and then I believe right after that we'll jump into multiplication and division of fractions which if you've seen it before you'll know that once you can do multiplication you can basically do division as well so hopefully we can get through all three of those things in uh, the next video so we'll start the next lesson with subtracting mixed numbers and then we'll go on to multiplication and division of all different types of fractions and hopefully we can get through all of that um, depending on when you guys are watching this you'll have an assignment based on all of those things coming up in the not so distant future but um, you know you might not depending on when you guys are watching this that assignment could be pushed back to later or we could skip that assignment altogether uh, and you could just do a whole bunch of extra uh, practice problems on your own or I can make extra videos for it or anything like that so if you'd like to see an extra video on any of the topics that we've covered so far please let me know and I would be more than happy to set aside some time uh, to do that especially this week um, but uh, but yeah, otherwise, hopefully all of this is making sense, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.